Between kindergarten and 12th grade, a child will spend 16,000 hours in formal classroom instruction. That time is not only determining what a child learns, but it's also having a dramatic impact on their worldview, what they believe is important and worth loving. Throughout the country, Christians are beginning the work of reclaiming education from the government, and there are encouraging models developing even now. One state that can serve as a model for other states is Ohio. And here to talk about what's happening in education in Ohio is Aaron Baer, the president of the Center for Christian Virtue. Aaron, welcome to Washington Watch. Joe, always good to catch up with you. Well, it's good to see you. Some exciting news in Columbus. A school is being launched. Tell us about why this is so encouraging. Absolutely, Joe. You know, this is a, an issue we've been looking at for a long time. You know, really across the board, the, the government-run education system is failing kids. Uh, academically, uh, in, in especially in inner cities, you see uh, kids in, in, in high school who can't read. Uh, but then really what we've seen exposed over the last few years is the, the moral corruption of kids, uh, whether it's critical theory or the LGBT uh, ideology that's permeated every classroom across America. Uh, and and the, the question was, what are we going to do to get serious about this problem? Uh, and what we've built out in Ohio, along with a robust uh, sort of school choice system uh, through vouchers and eventually our backpack bill, uh, we built out a model for churches to get in the game of educating kids uh, full time by starting schools in their existing Sunday school classroom space. Uh, and we just actually had our first pilot uh, program, our first pilot school uh, incorporate. Uh, and uh, they'll you had eight churches come together. Uh, and this is a model we're going to see at uh, hundreds of churches over the next few years. I think there's a lot of churches and a lot of Christians who think it would be awesome to have a Christian school available for their kids. And there's a lot of churches who would say, yeah, we'd love to have a Christian school here, but it's cost prohibitive. We don't have the infrastructure. We don't we don't have the money to hire a bunch of teachers and faculty. What is it that has made it possible for this to happen in Ohio? Yeah, you know, I think first and foremost in Ohio, what we have going for us is we do have a robust uh, voucher program here. We have something called Ed Choice now. Uh, what we're trying to do at CCV is expand it and make it eligible, make every kid in the state eligible for it uh, via our backpack bill. Uh, but what we, as we have right now, uh, kids already are eligible. Uh, kids in failing school districts, so most inner city schools are failing, uh, or, or low income kids are eligible for uh, a state sponsored voucher um, that can be used in a private Christian education. Uh, so that's what makes this first pilot school really uh, attainable. Uh, for this church to launch. And what we're doing at CCV is we bring in our education expertise, our legal expertise, uh, to provide all that regulatory work for the, these churches to be get up, be able to get up and going. Um, now, the, the, the key of this, though, Joe, really is the will of the church, is the church to recognize uh, that we have a real discipleship crisis uh, in our country today. Uh, what is forming our children? That, that's the question we need to be asking. And if churches are honest with ourselves, uh, today, we, we have to be, be honest that uh, really it's the culture, it's the public education system that's forming our kids way more than the churches. Uh, and once you once you sort of acknowledge that, that makes all of these other questions just logistical questions that we can work through. I understand that there are about eight churches who have come together for this specific school. What is it that pushed them over the line to say we've got to get involved in education again? Yeah, really, when you saw these churches come together, it was COVID that brought them together, where they saw the needs in their communities and the public education system that was flooded with millions of dollars, uh, refusing to open their doors to, ha to educate kids. Uh, and they recognized, uh, in particular, uh, that even the kids going through the system, and this is uh, where, where this church uh, is, where this school is, is one of the highest crime, highest uh, poverty areas uh, in the city, in the country, really. Uh, and, uh, and they saw that kids were, were graduating uh, from high school who couldn't read, who, whose futures were being taken away from them. And I think one of the things that really inspired me about this group of uh, churches that came together is they were actually coming back to one of the, the, the first missions of the church, which was you look at a state like Ohio where the, the pastors that founded our, our state uh, that came out with the Northwest Territory, it was they wanted to start a state where people valued literacy to read so they could read God's word. Uh, these churches saw that the, the kids in their middle schools and high school Bible studies couldn't read, which means they couldn't read the Bible. Uh, and they felt convicted to say, we've got to do something about it to help these kids. 
and to that point, do these churches then see this as a distraction from their primary goal of evangelism and discipling and spreading the gospel? Or is this part of that? I, I, Joe, that's the, the best part about all of this is that this is the church getting on mission, really. This is the church going into discipleship uh, and, and recognizing, hey, we're actually going to be helping our people, growing our church, achieving the mission uh, that, that Christ gave us through our churches uh, by, by discipling and raising up that next generation. You know, they're, they're, they're going to have all of these families coming to their church five days a week now that they can come around and love and bless. This is what, what's important about our model when we're talking to prospective churches, and we have 16 churches that have expressed interest to open uh, in the fall of 23. Uh, what, what's important about this is we say we don't want to. We're not asking you to let a school be here. We're asking you to to own the school. To say this is our mission. We're you know we we might be still be doing missions overseas, but we're going to bless our local community and pour into the families that are here uh, through this school. Aaron, it's super encouraging. We're going to talk a lot more about this. This is how we rebuild the foundation. This is how we rebuild the walls that have been torn down where the church takes back that leadership, discipleship, education responsibility that we've outsourced to Caesar for too long. We appreciate your leadership there in Ohio, and we pray that it spreads across the land quickly. Thanks so much for being with us. Hey, thank you, Joe.